So now I don't want to do this. I want to let Stephen tell you in whatever few words you'd like to use to tell them what God's done for you. Go ahead. If you want to, stand up and tell the folks what God did for you. In, in subtle ways. And before you know it, you're overwhelmed. The next thing you know, you continue. It's, 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 a, it's a constant spiral. And you wonder where, where did I go wrong? What, what, what's, what's going on? And uh, I went over there doing what I had to do. And there were demonic forces there. And they they search for opportunities to if you're a saint of God, if you're born again, they'll search for every opportunity they can to torment your soul. And they found opportunity with me. I went to Iraq, I came back and brought a lot of baggage with me. I just didn't mean to. It, my heart was, was, was right when I, when I went. But I got really worked over and I came back and I'll tell you, I've never experienced nightmares the way I have. The just total lack of peace, lack of sleep. I couldn't sleep. It was, I, I go to bed and I you never rest. Your, your mind is never able to rest. These that torment you. You go to sleep, you will nightmare, wake up, nightmare, wake up, nightmare. Next thing you know, the alarm clock goes off, you're going to start your day. And it takes a toll on your body. And just, that's called, it's, you're being sifted as weak. And the devil really works on you. And um, the preacher, I didn't, tell you this, but uh, a few weeks ago, the Lord told me to come down and be anointed, and I didn't do it. He told me again, you need to go down there. Just, uh, some people had gone and got anointed, and I was just like, no, people think I'm crazy. And there was a stifling spirit there, and uh, I just... I let it go on. And that continues on. And uh, I'll tell you what, Sunday night I went. And I told the preacher, I said, Preacher, this, this is what's going on. And the preacher knew exactly. He, he knew it was demonic. I wasn't even possessed. Right. I did. But I had to get victory over. 
of the disc. You know, and a lot of people don't understand, you know, when we tell people, to, you know, this is how we say it works. This is a real battle. This is a real spiritual warfare. And then, oh, praise God. I, I really do. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond a lot of words, preacher. Preacher, no one has been loyal and he prayed. I'll tell you, the, the burden that is lifted, and it's, it's not me, it wasn't preacher, it wasn't me, it was the man, it was God Almighty. And then there's people, though, that, I just got to tell you, there's people you go with. They'll look down on some people, but they neglect that they have the spirit of pride in them. There, there's, there's so many there things that you go out there, out these doors, there's so many evil spirits that have attached themselves to things. And next thing you know, they're in your mind. They're, they're, they're working on you. And, and you don't That's do right. it, but you get a place to the devil. And Satan will do it work on you and the next thing you know you're just overwhelmed and you don't have a clue what just happened but I want you to know that God is greater That's right. God can give you the victory God has given me the victory and it is, it, it's, it's not just a one time thing you, the Apostle Paul said I die daily you have got to it has got to be a daily victory it, 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 that has been something the past few days that I've just realized. I got to wake up with, with that part of prayer and say, God, I need victory today. Yeah. I can't do it's this good, on bro. my own. Yeah. I can't Where's do it on my own. The preacher quoted the verse, in him we move and have our being. And that is so true. It's only by God's grace that I'm here standing today. And uh, I love every one of you. And, um, don't 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 leave here defeated. Get the victory. It's not worth it. Right. Praise God. Amen. All right, that's good. He says he sleeps now. And the nightmares are gone, and uh, no uh, Xanax or whatever else the doctor would uh, subscribe, prescribe. Well, Did it? What? Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, you pay him $300 an hour to give you that, too. All right. That's victory, folks. If you'll turn the Bible to 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse 8, I'm going to talk about a word that's found three times in the New Testament. Three times. The word unspeakable. It means unutterable. Now, you can approach that in a number of ways. Number one, it is physically, you're physically incapable of saying with words what needs to be said. Or number two, it is so profound that God shrouds it in mystery and can only be revealed by the Spirit. You following? Unspeakable is when the Apostle Paul said, We rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And then the Bible says that the Apostle Paul was caught up in the third heaven and heard words that were unspeakable. And then he refers to the unspeakable gift. Three times, only three times does that word show up in all the millions of words in the Bible. I want to talk about these three tonight. I'm not going to take a lot of time with it, but I wanted him. I didn't know he was going to be here tonight. Didn't know he was going to say that. I already had this message prepared. But when I walked in the foyer and he said that, that compliments what I'm going to be saying. Amen. Because the first one is in chapter number one of First Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 8. Whom having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's not a given. That's not an absolute automatic thing. To rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory is something that comes to you once you're beginning to get the victory. The victory is not easy to get. I went from June last year until this past Wednesday out here on, in South Carolina on the beach without any joy, preaching week after week after week, born again, saved by the grace of God, and love the Lord. But I've been in a, I've been in a knockdown, drag out, death battle. For what? My faith. 
And I can get up here tonight and name off name after name after name of preacher that's fallen. Fallen. And the preachers that fell, fell long before you ever saw it. The falling took place in secret or in quiet. And so I went to war because I knew that was my faith was under attack. So I fought. I fought on the only thing that I knew. I knew I was born again. I knew God had blessed me. I knew He'd touched me. I knew He'd changed my life. You fight on the basis of what you know, not theoretical, not abstract thoughts and ideas, some high-sounding theological terminology. Forget that garbage. You fight on what you know. And if you don't know that you've passed from death into life, you have no basis to fight. You're not in a battle. You're tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine, taken captive of Satan at his will. You have no authority. You have no battle. When I prayed with him Sunday night, right here, right there, I laid my hand on his head and I said, You unclean spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come against you. Leave him. And if anybody was down here praying, I don't know who was praying. I wasn't conscious of anybody down here praying. I was conscious of one thing. I was going to war against the spirit that was tormenting him. And, uh, but my joy came back Wednesday because early Wednesday morning, I was about 6 o'clock in the morning, I was out there watching the sun rise. And I looked off in the distance and saw that creation, and I know the Creator. And I began to cry out, Thou art holy. You're holy, holy, holy. Thou art a holy God. And that's all it took. It was the time. It was the right time. And for the first time in nine months, I just literally was overwhelmed with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Out of the clear blue. And when it came to me, it came to me in power. I mean, he came to, it wasn't just a little quick emotional fix. It came to me in power, drove me down. Just literally came in weight like the heaviness. So holiness is heavy. And it came in holiness down upon my soul. And I knew that God had said, you've passed a point. I knew it. You've passed a point, he said, son. You've, it's not over, but you've got a victory. The victory, the, the battle's not over, but you've won a victory. You, <laughs> you've passed a point. And I, I, I couldn't say that I had done that. He had to tell me that, you see. And this joy is our strength. The joy of the Lord is strength. Now, if you are... If you, are, if, you are, if you are feeling good because of your circumstances, I'm glad that's good. Hallelujah. But you're happy. It's when you begin to feel the power of God moving your soul and something rises up inside of you despite your circumstances, that's joy. And they're not the same. It's good to be happy. But happy is associated with the old English word hap, which has to do with circumstances. Her hap was to pull upon the field of Boaz. Talks about Ruth, the book of Ruth. Her hap, her position, her time, her fortune, her place. That's what the word hap means. And the word happy is associated directly with whatever's going on, whatever's happening to you, see. Whatever you're going through. So you feel good about it? Good, I'm glad you do. We're on top of a mountain, Peter, James, and John said. It's good to be up here. They were happy, weren't they? But when Peter was taken before, the Lord Jesus was taken before the Sanhedrin and Peter was confronted about his discipleship, he wasn't happy anymore, was he? Uh, his happiness, <laughs> it, it, it evaporated. But his joy came to him later because he's the one who wrote 1 Peter chapter number 1. He wrote it to people who had watched their loved ones burn to death at the hands of a monster in Rome. And his name was Nero. And yet they had joy. And they rejoiced with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, I don't go around shouting all the time, and I'm not shouting every day, and it doesn't happen all the time like that. And if you can make it happen, you don't have anything. If you can go to a church service and work yourself into a frenzy every time you go in there and you think that's the joy of the Lord and the power of God, you're fooling yourself. But you go into a church service and you feel something begin to move in that place and there's a power that comes in there that's above you and there's a presence in there that's stronger and greater than yours and it's God anointing His Word and anointing the singing and coming in that place and moving. That's joy and power. And the saints of God, I've watched them moved with that. Amen. But I want to call your attention to a word that's very important. Victory. 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 You know, you can fill your head full of facts, and a lot of people do, and they think that makes them spiritual, and that thinks them, and they think it makes them mature. It doesn't make either one. You can fill your head full of facts, memorize every verse in the Bible. You can quote the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and be deader than a door now. Amen. You can. You can. You can be dead. But joy is contagious. 
joy spreads like fire. It does. When they saw the disciples, and, saw, and the Bible says they said they, they saw that they had been with Jesus. Well, how did they know they'd been with Jesus? Not because they were spouting out doctrine or preaching to them, because they had something in defiance of imminent death, and they could stand in the face of it, and they could rejoice. That's how they knew they'd been with Jesus. So we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, I want to ask you a question tonight. It's not to condemn you. I told you you went nine months without it. Do you have joy unspeakable and full of glory tonight? Ask yourself that question. <laughs> Do you have joy? There's stages of joy, joy unspeakable. That just literally blows the top off. <laughs> you go wild. <laughs> People, this guy's crazy. Lock him up. Put him in the loon bin somewhere. <laughs> That's okay. Lock me up. But if I know the Lord Jesus and I know whom I have believed and I know joy, I do know joy. When I got saved, I floated to Snyder Motors every day for weeks. I was a Volkswagen mechanic. I floated in. I floated and opened my toolbox and floated out and got cars and floated in and drove them in and floated around and did my job and all I could think about was the Lord. I'm tuning cars up, doing brake jobs, valve jobs, jerking motors out, doing clutch jobs, whatever your mechanic does, doing all that stuff. But all I could think about was the Lord. 24-7. That's joy. How many ever had that joy? That initial salvation joy? Don't you wish you could keep that? You do, don't you? But you can't do it, can you? Now, at the end of this, I'm going to tell you what this is about. 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Here's the second one. In 2 Corinthians 9, 15. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 15. The Apostle Paul said, Thanks be unto God for His unutterable, unspeakable. Why would He give His Son for a dog like me? Unspeakable gift. Think of all the filthy garbage you've done in your lifetime. And don't give me some pious look. You're in the wrong church for that. This is not a church full of good people. If the church you've been going for, everybody feels good about themselves. We're goody, 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 you know. We're so pretty. We smell so good. Our choir's so beautiful. We're everything just one. Oh, we're just so wonderful. We do all these good works and we do all this. You're in the wrong church. Amen. What are we? Sinners saved by grace. Amen. There's only one that gets exalted in here. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one worthy. Amen. If you go to a church where all you hear is men being exalted all the time, sooner or later, sooner or later, a, a uh, what's the word for it, will begin to build in your soul a uh, resentment. That's the word, resentment. You'll get so fed up with great men you want to throw up, but you'll never get fed up with exalting the Lord Jesus. You'll find a million ways to exalt him. You'll find a million ways to exalt his name. You'll find a million ways to tell people how beautiful he is. You'll find a million ways to worship him and glorify his holy name. Because there is a million ways and you'll never exhaust it. He's beautiful. He's marvelous. He's wonderful. He's the God and, he's the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ when he came was the manifestation of God the Father. God Almighty manifest in flesh. The Godhead walking amongst us right there in flesh. Amen. That's who he is. He's all there is. Everything in the future is about Jesus. The whole future is about him. It'll take a hundred billion years just to manifest who he is now. Just to take in what he is. We shall see him as he is, the apostle Paul said. Surely you don't really believe tonight that you've really got it all figured about. Out as to what he is now. Why, my goodness gracious. But it is the gift of God he gave his son. But it's another way to look at that too. The gift of God is what? Eternal life. Right. How many churches have you been in where these people are just, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're so uncertain. They're, 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 they're trying to be good people. They're trying to do the best they can. But they're so uncertain. They just don't know whether they're born again or not. Isn't that sad? They're not reading the same Bible I'm reading. Ephesians 2 said, You hath he quickened who were dead in sins and trespasses. By this shall you know that you've passed from death unto life. 
if you have love one for another. These are proof positive. He said, now I've given you the earnest of the spirit, the down payment, so you'll know that you're born again. I know what the spirit of man is. I was full of it for 27 years. Loaded up with it, <laughs> running over, pressed down, shaken together. <laughs> I had the spirit of man. In 1973, the Holy Ghost came into my soul, and man, what a difference took place in me. And it, no, there's a lot of, you talk to some, some people call themselves Christians and use that term Holy Ghost, and they like Holy Spirit because it's more theological and has, it's more, it's more clean. It's more, it's something, we can hang it on a wall somewhere and blah, blah. No, the Holy One, it dwells within us. If you have that earnest of the Spirit, how I many you know what I'm talking about? When all of a sudden somebody moved into you and he wasn't in there before. This is why I have problems with who people have been Christian all their life. I have a problem with that. You're not raised into Christianity. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't pattern somebody to conform and teach them and mold them to be Christians. What you do is teach them what the Bible says about them. And that when they come to that age, when they begin to understand, I'm a sinner. I'm accountable. I was born a fallen creature. And Christ died for my sins. Now, they may come to that age at an early age, but it may be later. But the bottom line is, everybody comes to that age. They've got to come to that time. The old timers called it the age of accountability. And the third one is in 2 Corinthians 12, 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. My, that's gracious. That he even gave us that unspeakable words. I do believe, folks, I really do believe that if God rolled back time and what is visible and let you get a good glimpse of glory. I know a man on television, he said he went to heaven and he starts describing heaven. He starts talking about heaven. He, no, he makes a big deal about it. He's a Pentecostal evangelist. He said he went to heaven. My problem with his heaven is that it's not much more than a glorified earth. I got a problem with that. Don't you? Eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man. The Apostle Paul said, I saw things unspeakable. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that if God rolled back glory, and you could see it roll back, and you could see all your loved ones up there, that mama and that daddy, a husband, a wife, son, a daughter, been gone 40 years, been gone 50 years, see them and see where they are and see what's behind them and look at them beckoning for you and say, I'm waiting for you. And you look up into that and you see, and you get a good view of that. You'd be hard pressed to come back. You'd be wanting to leave here. You really would. Really would. The apostle Paul said, I have a desire to part and be with Christ, which is, is, it, is that true? Is it really true? Far better, far better. It is far better. The only life you've ever known is this life until you're born again. Once you're born again, the strife takes place between giving up this life for that life. If you live after the flesh, you'll die. Now, let me explain something about Stephen so you'll understand it. There's an erroneous teaching, erroneous teaching going on in the Baptist church where that you got nothing to fear from a demon. You don't have to worry about evil spirits. No problem, man. You're born again. Sail right on into glory. Let me tell you something. The Bible talks about your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. But if you don't keep that temple, God will destroy it. All right? This body right here is subject to all of the ills and sorrows of this world. And it goes back to the dust from whence it came. God is not going to raise up this body for you to dwell in. It's done for. He will raise up a glorified body that has nothing to do whatsoever with this body or where this body came from. But your soul is a battleground. The Bible says that you can have a fleshly mind. That's the battleground. That's where demons want to work on you and work on you hard is in your soul. They can't touch your spirit. That spirit is born again and sealed by the Holy Ghost and you are saved forever. Cannot touch your spirit. That spirit has been created anew in the image of Christ. But your soul 
is a battleground that can either be fed by the Spirit through communion and fellowship, 1 John 1, or you can receive from this earth and receive its spirit, its life, its thinking, its world. And when you do that, then this battle rages in your mind. And this mind is the battleground. The mind, the mind is a thing that comes into existence in the soul that can either be a spiritual mind, renew it, or a fleshly mind, one or the other. And if a demon can gain possession of your mind, it will torment your mind. You can lose sleep and it can drive you to suicide. But the spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter number 5, to turn such an one over to Satan for the destruction of the, that the spirit may be, see what I mean? So don't ever let anybody kid you, Christian. You start getting out here and start messing around with the wrong stuff and dabbling in the wrong stuff, and uh, you're opening up your mind. But I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want to mess with a demon in your mind. They're smart. They're smart. And they will sift you like wheat. And they'll use you. They'll use you to their own advantage. And when they're done with you, they'll drop you. I'm going to give you two scriptures, and I'm going to close tonight. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 6. The Lord Jesus Christ said this in Matthew 8, 22. Matthew 7, 6, Matthew 8, 22. I can't say that I have, that I completely understand all this. But if the Lord said it, I'm going to take his words verbatim and just let them fall where they fall. Matthew 7, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the what? All right. Neither cast ye your pearls before lest they trample them under their feet and turn and rend you. Now look at Matthew 8, 22. Jesus said unto him, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Okay? Now these are strong terms, folks. He's talking about a group that's dead. All right? He's talking about swine and he's talking about dogs. Now, when you talk to a Christian, and most of you in here tonight, no doubt in my mind, are born-again believers. Some of you aren't certain, what have you. But when you start talking to born-again believers, your eyes have been opened. Did I say anything tonight that was untrue? I told you the truth. I told you the truth. You spend a week in front of that idiot box, taking into your soul all that filth and pornography and garbage and blasphemy that comes across that tube, and then try to have a prayer meeting. Look what it does to you. It stripped you clean. It has. But not only that, if that's all it did to you, it'd be bad enough. <laughs> but it's the spirit you're receiving from it. And you can certainly receive a spirit through a television or an audible signal or any visual thing. You can receive a spirit. And when I say receive it, I'm talking about that thing attaches itself to you and you've got to get rid of it. How do you get rid of it? And I'll close with that tonight. How do you get rid of it? I don't have any power to do get rid of anything. I have my own problems with them. <laughs> what do you, how do you get rid of it? You take authority if you're a true believer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're a true believer, God Almighty will confirm it. Are you a real believer? You take authority in the name of that one that you believe in and stand on the finished work of the blood atonement. I'm not standing on my accomplishments or who I am. I didn't come in here tonight worthy to cast a demon out. Are you following me? I came in here tonight a true believer in the Lord Jesus. I stand on his righteousness, his blood atonement, his finished work. I stand on that tonight. I come against that evil spirit in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over it and I say, leave. You have no authority over me or the one you're in. I'm coming against you in the name of Jesus and plead the blood atonement. And unless you want to hold on to it, that thing will leave. It could come back. And if you'll notice Wednesday night or Sunday night when I got down here to pray, how many of you remember me saying when you came down to the front? How many of you caught this? Some of you might not have caught it. I, yeah, I did. Thank you. I said, be sure you're saved because you're stepping into a spiritual battle. That thing can come out and go into you. Don't play with them.
seven sons of Sceva found that out. So, I'm not an exorcist. I don't go around looking for evil spirits. I'm a pastor. This man right here is a member of our church. I don't go off to haunted houses and try to look up stuff that I can deal with and all this stuff. I don't do that. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. I would that all pastors were like that. The church I was saved into was as ignorant of that. And I, I love them. There were good people. But they were as ignorant of that as you can be. Monumental ignorance to deny demon possession or oppression and the presence of evil spirits. That's, 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 that's theology 101, folks. Now I'll finish with this. He takes you along. He brings you to a point in your Christian walk. There's no two people in this house together on the same spot. Some of you are further on down the road than me. You're more mature than I am. You're more spiritual than I am. You may not have a head full of Bible knowledge and all that, but you've been through the battles. You got victory under your belt. You learn things about yourself and you learn things about God. You're down the road. You're on down the road. When you get down to a certain point, God taps you on the shoulder and says, Now, glad you arrived. I need you. Are you listening? He never plucks up some babe in Christ and puts him way down here where he puts him in the heat of the battle and says, Now, do the best you can. The problem is that not too many make it far enough down the road to where they really can become a warrior. And that is the greatest of all an intercessor. Regardless of what they say about them, regardless of whether right or wrong, they, your feelings are not involved. You, get to, you go down and you get on your knees and you start praying for them. You're an intercessor. You bear them on your heart. That's what we need, folks. We don't need, lap, we don't need lapping tongues. We don't, we don't need gossipers. We don't, we, we can, everybody's got plenty of them. Oh, you can talk. <laughs> Big deal. Everybody can talk. But can you intercede? Maybe they've been mean to you. <laughs> Maybe they don't like you. Maybe they did something to you in the past. But the Spirit of God begins to bear down on your heart and on your soul. And you start carrying them. You, you wouldn't believe what that means to God. When you've been done wrong and you take that very one that did you wrong and mean it and carry them before God and pray for God's help and blessing upon that one. You got something real there. You got something genuine there. You got a jewel right there. But that's not easy to get to. You got to get some victories on down the line. God knows what I needed my victories for. I didn't need a victory to have a big mouth. I got a big mouth. I didn't need a victory to be able to get up here and yell and scream, stomp, and preach, and carry on. I've been doing that a long time. I needed to get a victory, though, to learn something about my enemy and to feel that loss, dead, that, that, that part where you feel like he's left you, where you feel, where's he at? Where's God at? What's going on here? It, this, this thing that you, that you this, this system of faith that you've built around yourself, it's going to be tried one day. Your faith is going to be tried. My prayer tonight with all of my heart and all of my soul is that you come through it. Come through it. And when you come through it, you'll be better. You'll know him more. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. You know, I don't claim to be anything, Lord, and I mean what I say, Father. There are people in this house tonight, Lord, that are further on down the road than I am. And Heavenly Father, I'm sure there are those in this house tonight that are behind me. I know that, no doubt. But that's nothing to gloat about. My relationship with you is all important to me, Lord. I live before you. I walk before you. I talk to you. I believe in you. I pray for those tonight, Lord, who may be shaking, who may be getting weak, who may be getting tired in the battle, or they may be going into a place of terror. The enemy has terrorized them. He has gotten them to believe that he is stronger than you. Lord Jesus, tonight, in Jesus' name, let your word go forth. Lord, as you say, as the rain cometh down, the snow from heaven and water the earth, and bring forth in bud and give seed to the sower, let it go forth like that, Lord upon every soul in this, in this auditorium and those who may be watching on the internet, who may hear this later. 
let it go forth. I have no animosity toward any soul under my voice. Let it go forth. Let your word go forth as rain and let it touch every heart and let it bless them and help them. We need your help in Jesus' name. And now heads are bowed tonight. I mean, I gave out what God put on my heart. Would you like to come down here and talk to the Lord? Would anybody? Would you like to tell him, and I have so many times I've told you, folks, I said, Lord, help me. That's all I could say. That was my prayer. Lord, help me. I didn't have any word, didn't know what to say. I just said, Lord, here I am. You see what kind of shape I'm in. Help me. He did. He did. Like that field of Boaz, a handful on purpose here, a handful on purpose there, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Bless his holy name. He helped me. He helped me. I'm here today because of him. I didn't make it. He made it. <laughs> I didn't make it. He made it. I trust him. God help me trust him more. I believe, Lord, help thou mine unbelief. I believe, though. I do truly believe. Anybody else like come down here and let's talk to the Lord? I'm going to get down on my knees. I'm going to talk to the Lord. Pray with you. I'm praying. You notice what I'm doing now? I'm giving out. I'm starting to give out to people. Why am I giving out? Because I've taken in. He's given me something. Now I can give out. What do you have that you didn't receive of the Lord? You minister what you've been ministered to. What God's ministered to you, you minister to others. God never made us to be a reservoir. He made us to be a conduit. I won't use the word channel because that's associated with demonism, channelers. But he made you to be a conduit. He made you to be one who receives and gives. What, he, what you receive from the Lord, you give. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every soul to come this altar tonight, bowed on their knees. I ask you to fill them with the Holy Ghost. I ask you to give them strength tonight. Let the Spirit of God come down upon them. Come down upon them, Lord, in a way where they're going to know, Heavenly Father, they're going to know without a shadow of a doubt that you've touched them, that it's one more step in their walk of faith, that it's one more step closer to you, that you're going to tune their ear to hear your word, that once more they're going to hear the voice of God, but they're going to hear it a little clearer than they heard it before. They're going to see just a little bit better than they did before. Their spiritual sight, vision, and discernment is getting better in the name of Jesus. Bless every one of them. Let the Spirit of God fall upon them tonight, Holy One. And I'll bless you because you've blessed me. <laughs> I bless you because you've blessed me. I glorify your holy name. Now in Jesus' name, I pray for those who didn't come. That's okay. We don't want to force anybody into anything. But maybe they're right at the point to where they want to. But there's something holding them back. That's all right. Talk to them tonight, Lord. Talk to them. Let them understand, if they don't understand anything else, that I am nothing but a messenger. That the power is not in me. The power is in thee. And let your word go forth for the purpose you intended. In thy sweet holy name, bless your name. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the sweet, 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 sweet name of Jesus. Bless his name. Amen.